Elizabeth Leads the Way. Today we're going to read a biography about Elizabeth Cady Stanton and her fight for the right for women to vote. What would you do if someone told you you can't be what you want to be because you are a girl? What would you do if someone told you your vote doesn't count or your voice doesn't matter because you are a girl? What would you, would you ask why? Would you talk back? Would you fight for your rights? Well, Elizabeth did. And all of these things used to be true back when Elizabeth Cady was a girl. And all of these things might still be true today if Elizabeth hadn't led the way. How does the text on page 433 help you understand that this selection is a biography? Biographies are usually about people who have made a difference. And the last sentence tells readers that they are reading about a life of someone who led the way for change. What changes does the author imply that Elizabeth Cady helped bring about? Well, today, girls can be what they want to be. Their votes count and their voices matter. So we know that during Elizabeth's time, girls were treated very differently than today. Today, girls have a voice, they can vote, and when they're old enough, they can be whatever they want to be. Okay? So it's evident that Elizabeth did not like the way that girls were treated and that she fought for her rights. When we talk about the author's point of view, you can see that the details in the text here lead us to see that the author thinks that there's nothing wrong with being a girl and they agree with Elizabeth's point of view. She was only four years old the first time she heard someone, a woman, say life was better for boys. The woman had come to visit Elizabeth's new baby sister. What a pity it is she's a girl. How could anyone look at a little baby and feel sad? What could be wrong about being a girl? Well, she was 13 years old when her father, Judge Caddy, told a woman whose husband had died that the farm she had spent her whole life working on would be taken from her because without a husband, the law stated nothing belonged to her. Elizabeth was horrified by this unfairness. She said that the law should be cut out of every book. Judge Caddy told her that wouldn't change a thing. Preposterous! The law was still the law, and only men were allowed to change laws. So then, she decided right then and there that she could do anything a boy could. She jumped over high hurdles on horseback. She rafted across a raging river. How does the author use what Elizabeth says um, when she says preposterous? And how does it help you understand what she's like? Um, she's very angry at how the women are treated and she's speaking to her father and the dialogue in the illustration shows that Elizabeth feels very strongly about human rights. The unfairness of the law made her bold enough to speak out forcefully to her father. So when she was young, people thought boys and girls were not equal, but we can tell that Elizabeth does not agree. Elizabeth decides to jump over high hurdles and rafts over raging rivers because she wants to show that she can do anything that a boy can do. She won a prize for being the best in Greek, Greek studies. Her father was proud, but he worried about her strong-spirited, rule-breaking daughter. Ah, you should have been a boy. He knew how much easier her life would be, but Elizabeth wasn't interested in easy. At 16, since colleges would not let girls in, 
Elizabeth begged her father to send her to a girls' school to continue her learning. So while most young ladies were getting married and washing dishes, doing laundry, and having babies, Elizabeth was studying religion, math, science, French, and writing. Now we're going to talk about the author's point of view and how it shows that Elizabeth was different from other girls. It says here in the details from the text that she was strong spirited and a rule breaker and she's studying while other women were more accustomed to getting married and having babies at that time. Several years later, Elizabeth Caddy met Henry Stanton. He was an abol abolitionist speaking out against slavery. He understood how unfair it was for people not to have rights or power. He did not laugh when Elizabeth talked about freedom. He did not laugh when Elizabeth said all people should be able to live life the way they choose. And he did not laugh when she told him she would add his name to her own, but she would not give up hers just to marry him. So Elizabeth Caddy became Elizabeth Caddy Stanton. They had babies, she cooked meals, she washed dishes and mended clothes and did laundry. She loved her babies, but she did not love cooking and dishes and mending and laundry. Here you can tell by the author's point of view that he is showing how Elizabeth feels about Henry Stanton. Henry doesn't laugh when Elizabeth talks about freedom. He agrees that she does not have to give up her last name. They get married and it shows in the author's point of view that Henry understands Elizabeth and her point of view. One day her friend, Lucretia Mote, invited her to a lunch. Lucretia had always shared Elizabeth's ideas about all the things women could do and would do if only they had the right. The other women at lunch shared them too. And Elizabeth got fired up. She proposed that they hold a meeting, a meeting that would gather together lots and lots of women from all around to talk. But what would they talk about? There were so many things that they needed to, that needed to be set straight. Married women couldn't own property or even the money they worked to earn. Elizabeth had learned long ago that only men could change the laws because only men could vote. Let's look at some details from the text. We know that married women couldn't own property, they couldn't keep the money that they earned, and they couldn't vote. So the point of view is many things needed to change. And that's why Elizabeth is having a meeting with other women. That was the one thing they could change that could change everything. That was it. If women could vote, they could change all kinds of laws. This idea was so shocking, so huge, so daring. Elizabeth's friends gasped out loud. If they were flabbergasted, what would other people think? Elizabeth did not waver. She knew voting was the only way to make a real difference. Her battle cry for the right to vote rang out. Have it, we must. Use it, we will. Even her, Henry, thought she had gone too far. Let's talk about cause and effect. What would be the effect of women being able to vote? Well, they could help change all kinds of laws. The women could vote and the laws did not treat them as fairly as men. So the effect would come from women changing the laws that did not discriminate against women anymore. But on July 19th, 1848, when Elizabeth arrived at the meeting place, she saw for herself that she hadn't. The small church in Seneca Falls, New York, was filled with hundreds of people. Elizabeth read aloud what she and a few of the women had written together. Their Declaration of Rights and Sentiments challenged the idea from the Declaration of Independence that all men are created equal. 
When she was finished, she looked into the faces of the crowd and waited, and the room was silent. Then a rumbling began. It grew louder and louder and louder as people argued whether or not women should be allowed to vote. Let's look closely at the author's point of view about Elizabeth. The details here that support the point of view is that she did not waver. She knew that voting was the only way to make a difference, and she gave a battle cry. The author's point of view shows that Elizabeth is determined and confident. Looking at the meeting, we can make an inference. What inference can you make based on the success of Elizabeth's meeting? What evidence helps you make that inference? Well, plenty of other women agreed with Elizabeth that the law should be changed. I can infer this because hundreds of people came to her meeting. Why do you think so many people attended the meeting? They were interested in hearing what Elizabeth had to say about voting and women's rights. They thought the laws were unfair too and were excited for change. Word of the meeting spread like wildfire. Newspapers across the country scolded Elizabeth for her boldness, but other women joined her in the battle. The idea of women having the right to vote began to buzz in the ears of people from Maine to California. Elizabeth had tossed a stone in the water and the ripples grew wider and wider and wider. Many, said Elizabeth, must be stopped, but she was unstoppable. She changed America forever. Take a look at the illustration here of the women in the, uh, the map. And it shows how her influence spread across our country. How did Elizabeth try to win rights for women? Elizabeth thought women needed the right to vote. She proposed a meeting and Elizabeth and her friends wrote the Declaration of Rights and Sentiments and she read it at the meeting. All right, cause and effect. What was the effect of the meeting Elizabeth helped organize in Seneca Falls? It helped spread the idea of women gaining the right to vote. Many newspapers published articles saying that Elizabeth had gone too far. Women from Maine to California joined Elizabeth in her battle. Looking here, we see that women joined her. She made ripples across the country. She was unstoppable. The author's point of view is that Elizabeth changed America forever. Looking at the author's purpose, why do you think the author wrote a book about Elizabeth Cady Stanton's life? And also we need to answer our essential question and make connections. In what ways was Elizabeth Cady Stanton a good citizen? How did Elizabeth Cady Stanton's fight for women's right change life in the United States? Well, as a woman myself, I appreciate her work and her stance for freedom and rights for, for equality for, for women in our country. The answer to our central question is Elizabeth was a good citizen because she was determined to change unfair laws and take action. Now you're going to watch the YouTube video that is a short documentary about her life. And then you're going to answer these questions in complete third grade sentences to show what you've learned from the text. I would love to see a paragraph for each. Good job, third grade. Let's go.